All right, welcome back everyone. This is Shadow Drake. All right, so the first example program I'm gonna do is gonna be solar panel control. Just because this will be probably something that almost everyone will do early on in the game. All right, so what we have is all of those solar panels badly aligned and we do have the sun up, which is great because we're gonna need that so that we can see how it goes. Uh, so, I do have a daylight sensor. You can kind of see the cables will be up on the roof, and so it is facing straight up. So what I am going to go over with you will apply for a daylight sensor that's placed up, kind of like how these circuit housings are. Not on the wall like that, but just facing straight up. And so I'm going to talk about the daylight sensor and how to make it work. So, first things first, let's, let's search up our daylight sensor. So our daylight sensor, uh, it's going to be more than likely one of your pins. It comes from a, from a kit sensor. And I think it yep got changed to be purely electronics printer only. And so while it has a mode of default horizontal vertical, I'm honestly not entirely sure what that does for the sensor itself. But we're not even going to use that. So I, I just thought I mentioned that sometimes the mode can be explained. And so... We're going to look particularly at horizontal and vertical because this tells you the sun's positioning. Now, the, the numbers that the daylight sensor gives is based on how you mount the sensor. A sensor facing straight up will give completely different values from a sensor that is mounted on the side, on the, on the side of a wall. Additionally, how it is rotated will affect the readings, and particularly horizontal. And so you could get well, horizontal and vertical. Again, it completely depends on how you mount it. And so for this program, it requires that you mount a daylight sensor, ideally on the roof or on the floor, facing it straight up. Now, the only way to kind of truly know what the alignment is, is uh, the, the where the logic connection is. That kind of helps to get the orientation for it. Um, now let's talk about the solar panel. Now, there are several different solar panels, but because there are four different kits. You have the basic kits, which are just purely flat or angle solar panels. They don't move or rotate or anything. They're just there for you to just place and forget. And the only difference between a heavy and a non-heavy is a heavy solar panel is storm damage resistant but they require quite a bit of better alloys in order to be built. And so we're going to be working with the normal solar panel kit. So the solar panel kit, you have two options. You have either the normal solar panel or the dual. This, this is needed because generally you're going to control these with batch commands. Now the solar panel has a single connection for power and logic. And so you can't split them up. Wherever power is, that's where the data logic is also going to be. The dual has them split up. You have a power connection on one end and a logic connection on the other. The uh, duals are what I have mounted out there. So we're going to be using this. In particular, we're going to need this prefab hash ID. Now, Talking about the logic, uh, since horizontal and vertical are all that we need to properly align them, those are going to be the data values that we're going to be working with. So, all right, now that we got that squared away, uh, let's copy that to the clipboard and let's go on ahead and get started. So, we're going to be in solar panel control. Going to go on ahead and start. Uh, because I got that on my clipboard, let's just go on ahead and define solar panel and get that out of the way. And let's alias our day sensor B0. And then, of course, let's do main, yield, and J main. All right. So now you can look at uh, in the stationer's wiki online or ask other users, and pretty much you're always going to find something, or you're going to find a generic 
chip method where you print out normal chips to do this. And so the only reason you want to do this on IC10 is because you want to add extra functionality, such as pre-positioning the solar panels to face the sunlight when it rises up. Or, or maybe other logic to help, I don't know, if you for some reason want to make a, a grid, you know, a box of solar panels and you want to current have them all properly track the sun despite orientations you know look the sky is the limit when you get fully deep into the program but for now i'm just going to do a simple line and as you get more experience with this you can branch out and go more complex so one of the things you need to know for the solar panel is you do need to have some offsets for both the horizontal and vertical and if you define them in your program, uh, let's just do H off for horizontal offset. We'll start at zero, and we're going to define V off for vertical offset. I'm also going to do that at zero. And let's put a few comments here. Now, based on the wiki, uh, on the wiki and this kind of works, all you need to do for the vertical is to basically do 90 minus this. This, oh, wait. I said zero. That's supposed to be 90. Typically, you always do 90 minus your actual vertical reading. And this 90 is your vert vertical offset. Uh, that's typically what you will do. Now, the horizontal offset is something that you will need and experimentally find out through your own testing because this is going to be based on how you mount how you mounted the daylight sensor, you know, where's the data port facing, and then also where's the data port facing for the solar panels. They're supposed to be off by 90 degrees to have almost a perfect tracking, but let's just be honest, when, when you're in the middle of the survival, you probably place a daylight sensor, you probably place your solar panels, and you have you probably don't even really have time to make sure that your vertical, um, that your logic port for your daylight sensor has to face a specific direction and the same for solar panels. It's, it's just, chances are you're not even going to realize that is important. And so that's why we're going to have a horizontal offset to simplify this. And this number is only ever going to be 0, 90, 180, or 270. One of these numbers is going to work properly. The other three are not. And I'm just going to go over how the, how the others look like so that you can kind of start debugging and troubleshooting. All right, Whew. let's just do some alias. So we're gonna alias horizontal, R15, and alias vertical, R14. And this is going to be what we read from the daylight sensor. Now, we're gonna use some simple math commands, and I haven't really gone over them, but they exist. And you know, those are just add, subtract, multiply, divide. And they're kind of self-explanatory. You add two numbers together and store it, or subtract, or multiply, you know. Worth mentioning, but probably not worth going super in-depth. So, like I mentioned, we're going to be using that for both of these. Uh, let's see. So, first, let's start off. We're going to load the horizontal from a sensor. We want the horizontal from it. We're going to load vertical from day sensor, and we want the vertical reading. So now that we got our two values, we got to do some math. Now, I could alias some registers, but I'm going to just choose not to. So first off, we're going to do the horizontal. Now, we're going to add and store this in R0. And what we're going to add is our horizontal reading and add our horizontal offset. Again, if it's zero, it doesn't matter, but this will correct your panels. And then for the vertical, you will see that it is always going to be subtract. We're going to do R1 in this case. And we need to subtract from vertical offset whatever we read the vertical reading. So 90 minus vertical, That's that, that has to happen. And that'll get the vertical tracking correctly. And then finally, we just need to write these two to our solar panels. So 
solar panel, horizontal, R0, SB, solar panel, vertical, R1. And that's it. This is basically bare bones tracking script. But now, remember that I said for the horizontal, one of these four is going to be correct. Uh, you can try to guess, or you can just go up the list. So we're going to try zero. I'm going to see what the solar panels do. So let's confirm that. Uh, solar panel control is this one. Make sure, yep, daylight sensor. Export. Turn on my chip. All right, my panels are moving. My sun is straight up, so let's see where they go. All right. So this is going to be one of those test cases. Now, see how the sun is very slowly coming down in that direction. Now, take a look at my solar panels from here, and you see that they are tilting down. So this is one of the cases where vertically it's tracking correctly because it's going down like it should. However, they're not pointed in the right direction, and that's where the horizontal offset is. In this case, because they're pointed away from the sun, and it's much easier when the sun is much lower in the sky. When they're pointed away from the sun, that means you're off by 180 degrees. So if we come back to our program and add 180, re-export, that should correct that problem. Now let's watch them take time. All right. Now you can see that they're coming down. And it should be perfect with the sun. All right. I see that was an easy fix. But now, let's say you started this off. You, I, you know, let's just say whatever value you chose. The, the last case you could see is your panels align, but they're perpendicular to the sun, like that. Basically, what that would mean is you're off by 90 degrees. So you can either choose to add or subtract 90 and see which works. And you're going to go back to one of the first two, one of the cases where it's either pointed away from the sun but still tracking or it's going to align perfectly with the sun. So in this case, you know, you can add 90. I'm going to try adding, you know, see what that does. And if it's correct, awesome. If it's not correct, you know, subtract 90 from the other side. And this should square you away. All right. So, to review, all you need is a daylight sensor outside, mounted straight up, for this logic to work how it is. It's going to change if you don't do it that way. Grab the hash ID of the solar panels you're using. Uh, in my case, it was just a normal. You could make this script work for any kind of solar panel. Like you can define, you could actually grab the normal solar panel. You can even grab the heavy. Uh, you can even grab the heavy version. You, know, you can make the script all encompassing and affect all four solar panels. All you really need is the horizontal and vertical from a daylight sensor. And then define an op horizontal offset and a vertical offset. And then just come back and either subtract. I mean, you always subtract from your vertical offset. And then just add your horizontal offset to whatever you read. And that's basically it. That's, uh, that's a dual axis tracking solar panel. Unfortunately, because this is the moon, we're not going to see the horizontal change from what it is. But when you get to planets like, when you get to literally any other planet where the sun actually has an angle, 
this should correct that as well. So the next thing we're going to do is automate a grow light script and tie it to the daylight sensor. Hope to see you then. Have a good day.